Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Top of the morning. We're still in Florianopolis, Brazil, but we moved to a different place. We're inside for this first one, although the window is open. When I move, you move. Just like that. All right. So today, Hans, you brought this up. Yes. What is the difference between a friend and an ally? Well, I want to I want to ask you because you introduced the term of being an ally, allyship, alliance, and how it is a better way of being with the other compared to friendship. There, it, there's a difference there. And I've been using it too with, with guys and with women and proposing them something higher, proposing to them to be an ally for them. But so far I, I've been using it loosely and, and just saying, um, what it means to be an ally is to hold you to your greatness. What it means to be an ally is also to call you out on your bullshit. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in how you see the difference between being an ally and being a friend. So I can understand that more of what it is, what it entails, both with women and with the guys that we're working with. So what would you say is the difference between an ally and a friend? Yeah, well, and my focus will be on the men today. You know, I think it's uh, these times we're living in, <clears throat> it's important to have allies, you know, be important, really great to have women in your life who are an ally, who see the greatness in you, call you to your greatness. Um, but also just as who are the men that surround us? Do they call us to rise up or do they call us to come down a level? And I think in general, that's one of the big differences between friends and allies. To see, let's say you have your group of friends and you really raise the bar in your life. You say, all right, I'm going for this and I'm holding myself to this. All of a sudden that is not comfortable for your friends to be around because they're playing, you know, they're used to playing at the same level. Friends typically mean guys who hang out and you're all comfortable together and you all accept each other. And uh, the moment someone like really fucking goes for it, it's like, come on, man, who is that guy? It's uncomfortable for the friend group because now they're in the presence of someone who's holding themselves to a higher standard. And in his presence, they could be looked down upon. Mm. They could see themselves as less. I feel shame. Or... And so the easier, the easier thing to do than step up and meet him up there is to talk shit about him, joke about it, laugh about it, and then maybe he'll say, uh, screw my dreams, screw the higher standards, I'm going to come back to this friend level and keep my mm -hmm. friendship. So, so if the friend, I'm pushing you now a little bit, but if the friend accepts you who you are, the ally doesn't accept you who you are. Well, the question is, who are you? Right. You know, who are you? Are you the you that you're thinking you are mm. when you're making compromises in your life? Mm. When you're tolerating, when you're not present to what really matters to you, when you're not stepping up and being a man or doing what you know there is to do for that, that really matters to you, for your friends, for your people. For your health, for your finances, etc., and so um, an ally holds that you are that great self within you, that limitless self, that the best man that you could be, and that's how they relate to you. They, uh, whereas the friends relate to you on a more on a level that's much more comfortable for them. Mm. So it's uh, what I hear is that. In, in an alliance, in an alliance, what you what you see is pivotal or at the core of, say, the being, me or the other, is that they're in constant evolution, transformation, upgrading towards being greater, being greater, being greater. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not really about changing who you are as much as it is simply 
remembering who you really are, mm. right? So it's a more of like a, a remembering into, oh yes, this is my standard, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, um, this is my vision, etc. So it's, uh, you know, as we've spent the last you know couple months here, I'm always talking about like awakening, staying awake, integrating, and um, pulling back the vision, you know? Pulling it back together because it slips away, you know? It's so easy to forget the vision that you had when you were most awake. Mm. It's so easy to forget the stand that you are for your people. Um, and uh, especially if it's bigger, far bigger than the level that you've been playing at. So it's really powerful to have allies who will remind you and who will call you to be that. But it's, uh, it's very rare. It's very rare. And people hire coaches and these sorts of things. And, and a great coach will really see you as that, to mm -hmm. use a sports metaphor, like the champ. And that's how he's going to interact with you. And that's why it feels good. And that's why you want to step up. And that's why you want... A lot of reasons why people uh, move forward when they have a coach is because the, the, the coach sees him for his greatness. And he wants to maintain how the coach sees him. He wants to live up to that. And uh, people will pay a lot of money to have, uh, to have a great coach. But you can also have allies. You know, you can, I mean, imagine, like, you don't have a coach. You have, you have a bunch of people. They all, like, let's say they're, you know, on the championship team, and they're all, like, Michael Jordan-level players on the team, mm. holding themselves and each other to a really high standard. That's funny, because I actually just saw the beginning of a video about the the Bulls, you know, and how they had incredible, well, they call it leadership in a way, but they had like several leaders, which comes down to they were allies, you know, mm. and it was a very funny, particular, uh, well, funny, but particular team in the way they, they were all like high, I mean, Jordan was maybe the number one, but uh, right. yeah, it's funny to see. So in 1997, me with my younger brothers, I split my landscaping business up into three pieces based on different neighborhoods, different regions of Austin, and uh, which was great. So they each now have a little business to run and grow. So as, as they're learning about business, they apply it directly, they make more money. It's really exciting, you know? They're going from being uh, low-level uh, employees to all of a sudden, they're running something. And the choices they make, the standards that they hold, the policies they implement in their business, they all have a financial mm -hmm. outcome to how much they're gonna make this week, to how much they're gonna make this year, to um, how much the business is gonna be worth. And, and they're growing as entrepreneurs, and we would all, so we each have our own business, so four entrepreneurs, and we come together as allies uh, for several different ways of interacting. And, you know, in my, uh, I was staying on West Campus in Austin, and I had an apartment on West Campus, so it's mostly students around. And, but the, the, the apartment was, there was a back office and a front office and a hallway, a bathroom, and a kitchen. There was no bed, there was no place to sleep or relax. Everything was intense. And as soon as you open the, the front door, what you see is a floor to ceiling um, mural, black silhouette, with the man with his fist in the air, <laughs> you know, from his torso up. It's just like, boom, <laughs> you know. And uh, everything, we've talked about the power of reflection, but everything was about that. Um, there's, there's no excuses no limitations, period. We shamed rationalizing. We shamed excuse making. Excuse making is rationalizing. And we shamed moments of self doubt. Like we put it, you just doubted yourself, you know? And it was like, it was like we allow no weakness in ourselves or between us. And the level at which we grew that year was so fast and so you, exciting. You just doubted yourself, did I? <laughs> But, uh, and, and in that front office, there's those four walls, and each brother, each ally had a wall. Mm -hmm. And the entire wall was theirs, and that all the walls were done in black. So 
but black, you know, paper all around the walls except for this mural with the guy with the fist in the air. And and each guy um, can plaster it with his vision. So normally people might have a these things have become popular, like vision boards. This is like a vision wall. <clears throat> so, and it's, you know, and this is not like politically correct vision wall. This is fucking everything that a young guy is dreaming of, wants to be, whatever. And, uh, and it, was a, it was so fun, man. It was a level of intensity. And the growth was so fast. It was just so fun. But let me say this about friend versus ally. Because first and foremost, I was their ally as their older brother. And, the, you know, their father didn't have a role in their life at this point in time. And their mother didn't at this point in time. And it's like, who is there to bring these guys up, you know? And to me, like going from em low level employee to entrepreneur is like a huge leap. This is like becoming a man because it's assuming a high level responsibility you're selling, you're making contracts, you're hiring people, you're firing people, you're, you're, you're in control of your future and your vision and your, you know, the, the, the more that you level up, the more that, you know, now you have you know, possibly payroll to make, you have other people counting on you, you know, it's a huge level of responsibility, but responsibility with vision, mm -hmm. excitement, the rewards, all of it. And then, you know, most entrepreneurs are by themselves. You know, you, you can't really be fully open with your employees, with your investors, with your whatever. Everyone's looking. They need you to play this role. And uh, so to come together just as entrepreneurs together, all on the same playing field and challenge the hell out of each other it was so exciting. And um, but I viewed it like as my role. So in part, like to me, ally is the role of older brother or father in the sense that you want to raise up these your allies and it's very much a tough love mm. kind of thing a lot of the time but at the same time we had the very bottom of the barrel locker room talk just guys hanging out and and just brothers you know we had we had all of it and mm. it was beautiful so i hear intense i hear challenging i hear tough love and these these give more of an insight in in uh, in what it means to be an ally. But what would be great, and maybe this is not the time, maybe you know, is to really pinpoint what the difference is between being a friend and being an ally, in like who who you are for the other, but also like in the action that you take in certain situations. That would be great to know. How would the friend react here? How would the how would the ally react? And then show like say three, five, ten, whatever differences of what it means to be a friend and what it means to be an ally. Yeah, well, I've got something that I call the sixteen like ally distinctions, and uh, there's there's ways that um, so let me let me give one of them as an ally. Like, and it's actually alliance distinctions, not ally distinctions. So it's like, it, it, it speaks about it for both people. Um, and, it's, and it's powerful to look at those distinctions and think about what each of them means because they're very subtly different. But what it is is it, it pinpoints ways or situations to which you might back down and not be my ally. And it's like, no, even in the face of that, you stand for being my ally or I stand for being your ally. So you might, you, for example, one of them applied might be, you know, we're, so let's say we have some kind of alliance, we're allies, and you feel like, you know, wow, like, you know, Michael's really doing great, he's making a lot of money, you know, but I see how he could be doing even better. You, let's say you're not making as much money or something, and, and you feel like, well, you're like, who am I to challenge him at this level? Because I'm playing this level. And so you don't. So you don't call me out to that higher level. Like, that's you not being my ally in that situation. So even in the face of your weakness or feeling less than or whatever, like, that's not an excuse not to challenge me to rise to a higher level. Um, 
the same thing could be applied. You, let's say you're playing at this level, you're making this much more money and everything else, and I'm down here, and you're thinking maybe, well, I don't want to make him look small. I don't want to shame him. I don't want to, no. You, you know, you still challenge me. You know, you don't let that get in the way either. And so there's, um, there's like no excuse is acceptable mm -hmm. to not call your, your people, your allies to rise to this level. Um, and you might, another situation might be, well, you realize, well, fuck, if I call Michael to this level, he might call me to this level. And I don't know if I want that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm ready for that. So I'm not going to call Michael out because I don't want to be called out. With your brothers, for example, or with John McMahon, was there like, do you say, do you announce, I'll show up as your ally, or are you just the ally? Or do you both commit to being each other's ally? With my brothers, we were all allies. It was, uh, we were all in it together. Mm -hmm. um, with John McMahon, there was not that kind of agreement. There wasn't, we weren't playing at that level. We weren't, um... Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's go to your brothers. Did you then say, did you kind of like, like you exchange vows in a way? Like you say, I'm your ally. I'm your ally. Did you stand in a group? Did you cut your fingers? <laughs> Let the blood... <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't any kind of... I'm, I'm, I remember something about that, but I, I don't think so. Because I and, see in practical terms. And you know, the, you know, the kind of like the vows that we do now, that wasn't, that hadn't yet evolved to that at that point. Mm. But um, it was very clear um, that we are allies. And there was just, um, and one, one of the things that was there is, you know, if, if you, so we talked the other day about tolerating, like no tolerating, like what if the standard was no, tolerate nothing, right? We had a standard that was no rationalizing, like no excuse making. Someone challenges you in a certain way or calls you out or, you know, has you confront yourself in, in the difference between what you say and what you do. Um, there's no rationalizing. There's no excuse making. If you want to deal with the pressure of that situation, you take that fire and you turn it into an upgrade in your life. You, you use the pressure mm -hmm. to raise up, not to, you don't put the pressure back on the brother and then make an excuse and then, you know, I don't want to face that. And later this became what I put inside of the boot camps or the ice stands. Mm -hmm. In the, in the very beginning, in the context setting of the game we're going to play, most people, when you shine the light on them, they, they want to shift it away. And so, but the most powerful thing is bring the light mm -hmm. and use the light to fuel you into a powerful upgrade and taking more responsibility uh, in your life. What so I we had ways of doing that. Yeah. What I see is like to, to really understand, because here's what I see. A lot of people, you, I, me, we're going to use the word ally and think we know what it means when it gets messy in very practical situations where, say, imagine you're not brothers and one says, no rationalization, you know, you know, you agree. And the other says, don't bring shame to me, you know, whatever. You can see conflicts there. And that's why I think what it means to be an ally and how you would be an ally with someone is something that, if it's new, that would benefit from clear commitments, clear, uh, clear measures, you know. And what I think is the great advantage that you have with your brothers is that, is that, you went back for them, so they know you care. So you, they know that you want them to thrive, you know? And so either, either you solve that by, by having clear vows and, and exchange that, or you, or you are the one who really cares. You understand what I mean? So because you are the one who really cares, you know, and I feel that with you too, you know? 
there's still like moments that that I think what the fuck you know is he now is he like holding myself to the higher or is he just making for himself an excuse you know so he could say whatever he wants yes. and you know yes. and that's the that's where I'm like okay what what does it mean here to be an ally yes. and it's in that moment not solved by saying we're holding each other to a higher standard it's in that moment not solved by a simple rule as like no rationalization what do you mean it's not solved? like in in that specific moment i am not sure I, I know that in a larger sense you're an ally you know but it could be in that moment that you're using that even to rationalize yourself your own kind of behavior sure yeah you know and so it's not solved by and, saying and then that well then the question allies. is and who are you yes in the face of that yes so it's not solved by by knowing that we're allies for each other i will always right just so you know i will always rise up when confronted, I also we play around, we, and there's times when I I don't want to face something or whatever, yes. like 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 anyone. But um, you know, in the in the bigger context, I am. But yeah, in the particular now, I don't think that we are. That's the game that we're playing is no rationalizing, right? For example, that's exactly what I mean. You gotta like. What's great is that you agree on a game to play. Yes, you know. Yes, and. and and just and so later on, you know, when after this period of months with my brothers, because it only lasted for a period of, you know, it was less than six months, and then there became a kind of a dynamic in the family where it was much more of a friend dynamic, and they in many ways forgot the level we were playing at. They 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 look back on it, you know, it's the difference between knowing and remembering, really being awake, right? And I'm holding fast to this vision, but their recollection of it is they got a story about it now. Oh, that was, you know, yeah, whatever we were doing. That was fun. That was crazy. That, But they're not like, so I held to it. I'm like, I'm going to bring this into the world and I'm going to hold the line. So eventually I did. And, and then came the boot camps and the ice dance. And, um, the way that I put this into the eye stands is, is just that everyone agrees on the game that we're playing. So if, if, and you have a choice, like if it's very clear, this is the game we're playing. If, if you don't want to play, you don't have to play, but this is the game we're playing. And if you don't play by the rules, um, here's how we're going to respond to you. And if you don't, uh, play by the rules when we call you out and not playing by the rules you can't play it's and it's not a it's there's no drama about it this is it it's just like a game of a football for example right you break the rule the ref gives you a penalty or whatever if you don't want to go along with the penalty or whatever like okay you have to get out the field you know what i mean you can't just stay and do whatever you want it's this is a game and so it's it's serious in the context yes. of the game in the bigger context, it's not so serious, but it's life, so it is serious in a way. Yeah. So what I hear, just in summary, like what, what allyship proposes, if friendship is like, like ah, eh, it, it is what it is, and it, you just connect, and it's and it's like fun and whatever. What what allyship or alliance or being an ally means is that you get together and you agree, or you show up in a certain way, or let's say alliance. You agree that you're gonna play a different, high stake, more high stake game. You agree on the game that you're gonna play. You agree on the rules within that. You agree on how you're gonna show up, you know. And, and being an ally means remembering the others. Hey, this is the game we agree to play. This is the game we agree to play. Yes. And the That's and the clear. way that we played it, like. In the beginning, there was very much a, you know, because if you confront me and I don't like how you do it, I might not respond well. So you could say, well, that's the, that's the responsibility of the person receiving it. Okay, so what if you don't like how I'm challenging you? Step up, right? That's, and that's the ultimate level, really, mm -hmm. is in the face of any kind of way someone's challenging you to step up. But what we did, especially in the beginning, is we said, okay, I noticed that you don't respond well when I challenge you like this. You tell me how to challenge you. And as your ally, I will try to remember to challenge you like mm -hmm. this. And then when I do, you say how you want to respond. So that if I do challenge you like this, 
you also know you have an yes. agreement to respond a certain way. And that was very powerful. But at the highest level, there's no excuse to not step up. And so, like, there, there's... And, and this is great. Like, learning to play the ally game is a big step in being able to facilitate an event like mm. the boot camps and the ice stands that I do. Because in those events, um, many times... Like the whole group can be clear about how I'm wrong, for example, or you know, someone in the group is confronted, or they're, or they they become really dramatic, and they they're weaving this story and this narration, and and everyone can sympathize with them. Yeah, it's you know, and if that's right, Michael Sky, fuck that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I have to stand in the face of that, and like I'm the one. If no one else, I know where we're going. And I help see them through their reaction, their weakness, their rationalizing, their drama, their whatever, and we make it to the promised land. And it's like it's like the heavens open, and everyone's experienced self being more powerful than they've ever have in their life. And uh, it's great. But the ally, and I'm just having this realization right now that that playing the ally game at a higher level is great. Like training to to like lead an event like that, but. Um, so did your brothers forget the game that you were playing or did they say the game is over or well in a way they said the game was over because they were like you know Mike we don't need we don't need you in this way right now we got this basically mm -hmm. with their business so I mean after a while they did got their business right like they didn't need the same kind of support after a while um and there was also a way to which the the power of the alliance started to to weaken and that so first it was just the four of us brothers then we invited in two sisters and it was also it was still really powerful in fact i think it was made more powerful initially but in time it was there were certain ways of interacting and challenging that that the women in the group were not up for. They just, it didn't resonate or whatever. And so we start kind of accommodating or whatever, but, and then eventually like, and we had this, uh, this voice networking technology that we used, which was a really powerful component um, of the Alliance. And I mean, imagine like being plugged, like plugged into the matrix. You're out in the real world, you're surrounded by other people, but the reality you're living in is the Alliance, you know? And you're like, you're playing at this level, and you're you're calling in to announce your 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 upgrades, your big insights, your wins, your victories, challenging each other out, and and every time you get on, it's like the voice is like a microphone, and like you are Morpheus basically, right? Calling your brothers out, and uh, so it was it was almost it was cult like uh, in a lot of in the sense that the reality that you're living in is. Is not the reality everyone else is it's living in. It's the new game. So, but it's like any kind of like a fraternity or whatever. Right. When you're all with a group of people who are playing a certain game, the game that other people are playing doesn't matter as much. The game that matters is the game that you're all, you know. Agreed upon. Yeah, so now I want to just come back to something that you, that you mentioned earlier. You know, if you're someone's ally, so this is, this is where it got to for me. Okay, so you asked about my brothers, what happened to the Alliance? Well, because it was kind of all tied together, the consulting I was doing with my brothers, the, the ways that we were being allies and, and all this, it was all kind of intertwined. And my one brother, brother-in-law, Mark, he went off to, to Utah with my sister. And so things just kind of fell apart. And an alliance like that is a fragile thing. It's a really fragile Why thing. Why is that? Because one person and their narration can can affect everyone else, how everyone else is seeing things and people's level of commitment and so forth. Um, whereas it can all spy, it can spiral up really powerfully, really fast as well. It's just it's a fragile thing in that way. It's like. Um, well, any kind of, you could even say like a cult or like a religion, why do they ban people who all of a sudden 
are not believing mm -hmm. or um, you know hanging out with the non-believers or whatever because that one person can start to change everyone else's mindset mm -hmm. and ideas and they lose the faith it is it's a fragile thing so although I talk talk about this in terms of a cult an alliance it's not that but it has a similar dynamic there so uh, no merci <laughs> Um, so what are the, what are the, and what I was going to say, what I was going to say is this, it then became my challenge. How can I be their ally, right. even though they're not playing the game? So you don't need an alliance, but you show up as an ally. Yes. What is the, what was I going to ask? What is the, I was going to ask about the f f fragility of, uh, what, what did you learn? in terms of alliance that were like the, the key components to make it work, the alliance. Because you had it with your brother maybe, but, and you could say you have that kind of natural more because you care so much. But what is the, in, in your time, what are the, what are, what are the key components of, of uh, a good alliance? Well, f first and foremost, it's you who takes full responsibility to being an ally and playing the game. No matter what, no matter what the others do or don't do or whatever, it always comes back to you mm. holding it high. So you, you view it as your alliance, not the alliance. Right. Because you can be tempted to think, okay, this is the, com the community, the group, the alliance. No, no, no. That's a, I would call that a mistake because that that's can easily lead to the downfall mm. because you're going to start putting responsibility on them. No, it's all you. You can challenge them, you can call them out, you can whatever, but to whatever extent they don't show up, they don't respond, whatever, you can use that as an excuse to you take it down a notch. Mm. Okay, they don't want this. Okay, they're not ready for this. Okay, they don't appreciate me. Whatever. Well, that's an individual like way of working, you know? But if you talk in terms of the alliance, the alliance, when someone is uh, taking it down and a notch, and not correcting it, not showing up, it's, it's, it's meant to fail. Like not being an ally, but the alliance. If I'm, if I'm, if we're saying, okay, the game we're playing, we're getting up at six, say, so to speak. And I say, Michael, it's six o'clock, get up. You know, and I say it five times and you're not getting up. And, and the next day again, you know, there's nothing, you know, if, in terms of the alliance, you need two to work. Yes. This is a... Not sure. a real example, because you're sure. getting up an hour before. Sure. But, uh... Well, you can say, okay, you do that two mornings in a row, and you start to say, well, Michael's not committed, he doesn't care, it's yes. not important to him. But this is all your narrations. Okay. You're still forgetting. You're, you're, you're taking your level of in that In that scenario, you'd be taking your level of commitment down. And in an alliance, you don't do that. Right. You accept... <laughs> so you come up, you make me get up. You Whatever. In the face of it all. Right. It's, uh... But if, like, in terms of the alliance, like, imagine that you're, you've given up, you know, and I keep going and I keep going and I keep going. At some point, it's going to end. Well, at some point, it doesn't make sense for you to keep playing the same game exactly. in the same way and all of that. The alliance, you need two. Because you said it takes, you were six and it takes only one to, to bring it down because of a strong narration, you know? So... And that's different with what well, I... Well, it also can only take one to hold it together. So, the, but part of, the, part of the challenge, what I'm saying is that if you, if you view it as the alliance, you need to have the distinction that it's my alliance. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm leading this. And, and I would suggest that for every person in the alliance, so to speak. Yes. It's my alliance. These four guys, this is my... I am the leader. Each, uh, let's say me and my brothers... Each of the four, we are leaders of yes. my, our own alliance. And we don't view it as the alliance. So okay. there's, a, there, there's a lot of kind of distinctions. And it is a, uh, it's not the way human beings normally play together. So it's, it, and there are a lot of potential pitfalls. Mm. That when you play this kind of a game together and you're this intimately standing for each other, um, people's past traumas and vulnerabilities come up about, you know, their, 
yeah, there are issues with their father. There are issues with uh, intimacy, with being close to people, with uh, with authority. You know, like all of this is stuff that that you need to deal with. But what's great is, is if you're committed, then you transcend all of those limitations and you evolve to become a more powerful uh, person, more powerful leader. So, yeah, it's definitely like, it's like I was pushing for a, a definition or like a, a change with friendship and I see the difference with it. And it's, it's enough, like there's enough distinctions now already to see that it is an upgrade from, from friendship. At the same time, you know, it is never solved. In a way, it is, it is, it is a practice. Uh, if for nothing else, you gotta agree on the game you play, you know, and you gotta get clear on what it is that, it's like the law is, is, is well, case yeah, by if case. you, it, if, I mean, there's friendship, then there's being an ally, and then there's uh, having an alliance, let's say, right? So yeah, it's, um, and that's, you know, what happened in 97, having that alliance is what I've always been fighting to get back to. Mm. And I, at different points, I've had it with different people to a, a different extent. And um, yeah, it's incredibly, it's, man, it's so beautiful and so powerful. Maybe this is too intimate. How is, how is our alliance going with your experience? It fucking sucks, man. I was going to say it, but... <laughs> no, it's great. There's been a huge up-leveling in our alliance, so to speak, in the last two months, yeah, since we got here and made that commitment to go like all in together. Um, my experience beforehand when, um, you know, when we were just friends, really, is there were a lot of ways that I wanted to challenge you that I felt like you or resistant to, or you just didn't want, you didn't see the, you weren't interested in being a great entrepreneur, for example. And so it's like, okay, that's, you know, if you don't have the interest, the game I was playing is to get you interested, you know? And, uh, and then you became interested, like really interested. And I saw that and I was like, okay, let's, you know, let's move to the next level. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but there's there's always higher levels. And so that's what I'm looking to create next in a business format is where men come together for a mm. period of time, let's say 30 days, and we play as allies. No, you know, leave no man behind. Um, you are your brother's keeper. <laughs> you know, like we're all in and there's no excuses. There's no tolerating. There's no rationalizing. Oh, there's, what a, there's no speaking in a weak way. What I love about this is that you play a game for 30 days. It's only 30 days. Yes. It's not, it could very well change your life forever. Yes. But if nothing, it's just 30 days. Yes. So it's not like your life commitment. Yeah. 30 days, you, you, you try out something you've never tried before, being an ally, like playing a different game, you know, and, uh, and it could change your life. And, uh, yeah, and with the ice stands and the boot camps, it was it was only three full days, like seventy two hours, and then uh, yeah, about seventy two hours, and there was there was some time before and some time after, like another workshop day after, but just seventy two hours we're gonna play this game. But uh, yeah, now I'm 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 wanting to bring it to life, you know, I wanted to bring it. it. That was a difficult model because it was such an intense experience for people and so incredible and I got all the accolades and testimonials and all that but then people go home to their separate lives and worlds and commitments and relationships and you're not you're not physically present you're not you know it's it's very challenging to maintain the level of vision and commitment and and ally relationship and actually the reality is at the boot camp, the level of the alliance, the alliance is pretty low as well. Because the game we're playing is I am their ally. I'm their ally and they're willing to allow me to be their ally. But they're not my ally inside of that event. They're just, they don't even know what they're signing up for. They wouldn't even know what they're signing up for to, to do that. 
So. So what do you? I'm 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 watching my my watch that doesn't exist. Aren't you about to announce something? How many hours do you have? Yeah. Well, just a couple hours. No, I have to announce a date, and we're gonna we're gonna do our first uh, 30 day all out brotherhood alliance with men who are entrepreneurs and uh, want to play a much higher level game of accountability and uh, self accountability and yeah play the ally game so i'm not going to announce a date a date randomly i'm going to put a little thought into it but i am going to do it in the next couple hours the next couple of hours yes when is like what's the deadline by midday noon or 1 p.m that's uh, four hours from now. I see Julian Bales out there. He was part of a uh, intense accountability program that John, where John and I met inside of uh, London Real, London Real Business Accelerator. I don't know if he's still watching. What's up, Julian? You guys are going through quite a uh, quite an intense. I don't know if you're still with London Real, are you? But they're. Uh, they're the ones doing those... Uh, I saw uh, a video, actually, yeah. the other day. What's the guy's name? David David Ike? Is it David? I'm making his name wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, they're going through some intense shit over there. But they had a uh, an eight-week business accelerator program, so it's people who, who are or want to be entrepreneurs. And then they had a high level of uh, accountability that they brought to it. But... Um, this is next level <laughs> accountability. <laughs> anyway. All right. So stay tuned for the announcement is going to come in the next couple of hours. See you yes. tomorrow.